Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jay, sir. In this video, I'm going to introduce you the Cloudflare workers. I've been using Cloudflare like uh, several years, years ago, uh, but I mainly use it as a CDN provider for me. Uh, I haven't touched the workers yet, so let's see what workers it is. Uh, what, what is workers? Um, okay, uh, here's the homepage of the workers. It says, you write code, we handle the rest, blah, blah, blah. We have uh, a lot of benefits, blah, blah, blah. But this is uh, too abstract to understand really what it is, right? Let's just jump into the demo. Let's take a look at the demo. The link is in the description. You can click it. Okay, here's actually the pay playground of the Cloudflare. You can see on the left panel, uh, we have the code. And on the right, we have the preview. It's kind of like uh, the code sandbox, right? Here we let's see the code what it is. At event and listener fetch and within this event we event respond with the handle request event request. So this event is when a request comes and uh, the URL, the path information, the query, all the information are in the event request. And we have this async function. We handle this request and then we return a new response call with hollow world. So now the we can get the preview of its hollow world instantly. So this is actually pretty easy to understand what it is, right? This is similar to what uh, we will write in our express code. And let's just uh, do a little comparison to the uh, uh, code sandbox demo. This is a demo I used in a previous video about uh, the, what it is, uh, about the, uh, I think it's uh, top level await. Let's see the code. It's actually the same, basically the same. We serve some uh, logic here. He said like when we uh, receive a request like static, we serve the contents like this. If we get a request of the home, uh, the index, we serve the index HTML. And we have the preview here. If I modify the code here, send with hello world, we can get hello world here. But there are two different, uh, there are many two differences between these two approaches. You can see here, we have imported the Express server and uh, uh, created a server manually by ourselves, right? We listen to the port 8080. And also, if we see the terminal, we see that the code sandbox actually launched a new container, sandbox container for us, right? But in our uh, worker example in Cloudflare, there isn't. We just purely write some pure functions. This is for the request, just like uh, we hear, we get, and response. That's it. There is no express server, no container. If you modify a whole world here, we can instantly get the updated version. So there's no container, there's no express. So it's actually no server, right? So it's serverless. Voila. So this is the serverless world. Actually, there are a lot of uh, serverless uh, platform provided like the uh, AWS, they have the uh, Lambda. I haven't used it yet, and, but there is a slight difference about the implementation, especially when there is no container thing. Uh, it seems that Lambda use some kind of uh, the uh, serverless container. Uh, when the, it is needed, they will create a new container for your code. But no server, they have the same, uh, but they generally have the same idea of serverless. So what exactly is serverless? So for example, uh, if we, there are multiple people like you and me, uh, write different versions of these kind of uh, uh, applications, the ser servers. This is uh, the traditional way, right? We manage our own server. We, this is server for you. This is server for me. This is from from another people. And we have different logics within the server. We wrap things up and then put it on a server and uh, get it run. Well, the server might be running different platforms, right? The Linux, a local server on Mac or uh, Windows or anything. So there is a need for the abstraction of the system. So that's why Docker, Docker, the container, right? The container has provided a way to care less about the system. But still, we need to manage the server, right? We need to get the server run, get the logs. So actually, that kind of layer is still... Uh, is still required among different people. Uh, I would say these kind of a uh, same stuff we write it over and over again, except the logic, right? We have different logic, but we have the same server structure. So this is serverless means 
we why don't we just uh, split our application into different logics keep the logics left but put them all into the same server right so now before we have three servers now we have only one server so we can uh, drastically remove reduce the amount of server needed and take the server to uh, to high occupancy occupancy maybe for your server uh, you have uh, you have bought a server for like two giga memory, but you use only ten percent of it, and we could actually group together to take full usage of one server, so without wasting any uh, resources. So one server for all the logics. So this is means we care server less. It doesn't mean the server is gone. It this the platform actually cares for the server for us, and we only care for the logic. So logic typically typically there are a bunch of functions so this is a functions so this kind of stuff is called function as a service I, I believe anyway it looks pretty good right care serverless we just focus on the logic more and so what's the benefit the benefit is uh, if you work take a look at the uh, home page of the cloudflare worker you will see that you have a benefit of automatic scaling. Well, pretty true because uh, even even the container could be ha able to have automatic scaling, and never saying uh, never uh, let about uh, the uh, the workers, right? Your functions are just so simple, so easy to scale up, and also high performance global network. This is something not. Uh, this is not about the serverless. This is about the CDN networks up from Cloudflare. So the e actually Cloudflare take advantage of its own pre-existing pre CDN network to host uh, the logic code for us. Okay, writing JS, Rust, C and C++. Well, this uh, this is the capabilities of different platforms. Well, it doesn't matter that much for me. Uh, I'm only using a JavaScript. So support for one millisecond code start. So this is a different from other serverless platforms. We will talk about this later. Exceptionally affordable. Uh, as I said, now if you if you buy a server and only takes ten percent of the resources, it means that ninety percent of the resources you're wasting money on it. Why not just uh, we share the server, right? Like uh, your Uber, like anything. You share the server and you just reduce your cost. So this is what uh, the affordable means. No servers to maintain. Well, you don't care about server, uh, but actually the servers is maintained by the platform and you pay for that. Edge storage built-in. This is uh, uh, the KV store. It's like Redis and uh, yeah, nothing to to be mentioned. Static access with the land power. So this is integration with its own CD network. So this is the merit of uh, a serverless infrastructure. I would say there are four points of it. First one is free of concern. You care less about the server, and then you be able to be uh, uh, scaling fast. Yeah, they're just pure functions. We just uh, up to the functions and get it run, so it's easy to scale, deploy faster. In a traditional way, you need to stop the uh, server and then uh, up uh, up uh, get the new script to run. Right? This is a whole process, which is which took some time. Like uh, because it's a process, not a thread. We will talk about it later. And then pay as you go. It's affordable. This is the main benefit. So what's the concerns? The concerns is that. So actually, the functions are uh, stateless, right? Their functions, you don't know where they are. They are run in different scopes, right? You cannot keep a global state for all your requests. So a stateless, it doesn't meet the cri criteria if your app is stateful. For example, if you're doing something and uh, you might take some time, you hold the time in the memory, and then uh, when another request came, you would... Uh, get the stage from the memory and uh, response with it, respond with it. That that won't work in the in the in serverless approach because there is no state. The function might be running in this uh, scope, and later when it is run, it's running the new new uh, scope. Uh, no 
previous information is left. So it's stateless. And uh, because it's stateless, it top decouples everything, but it increases the latency, right? If you want to hold some uh, state, you need to uh, communicate with other uh, services, with other uh yeah with other microservices to get fr from api or, or something so that uh inevitably uh will create the latency will take some time to communicate with each other so it will uh track down the performance a little bit so this is the main two concerns i would say so one more thing is about this benefit says support was zero millisecond code start how is it impossible? Well, there is an ex explanation about, about this in the homepage of Cloudflare. Uh, it says in the traditional architecture, you do some isolation like this, but you, you only take up, take up a, a small fraction of the server and all the rest are wasted. Now we use workers in the, uh, now Cloudflare Flare workers uh, take usage of the V8 isolates and will uh, take full advantage of the whole process like this. So this is how uh, it cares about the security, about the performance. But why it is performing? This is something that looks familiar, right? I, uh, in my personal site project, I created something called Node.js Worker. Yeah, let's take a look at the Node.js Worker example. This is from the Node.js uh, homepage. Link is here. So for the Node.js, usually there is only one main thread for us, right? If you want to create, uh, handle some uh, uh, heavy calculating work, you can use a worker to do that work for us. And when it is ready, and uh, you can post a message to the main thread and the, and uh, respond with it. So this is a multi multiple thread. It's done by this worker thread. Okay, if it is main thread, we create a new worker. When it is called, this uh, this script will be initialized in the new worker, and with this is main thread set to false. So we create a worker, and uh, when a message we resolved, one error we eject. So wait for the worker to to be done. And uh, if it is not in the main thread, it means in a worker. So we parse some JS library. And uh, when it is done, we post a message to the main thread. So we create create a new worker, right? What if we change the script here into the code you write, right? If you write some code, send me, I will require here and run it in the worker. And then, uh, and then I return, uh, return a response. It's just, just uh, the same actually. It just this, looks this, almost the same as the logic here, right? You write this code, uh, I will run it in a worker, and then I will respond with it. Of course, the workers have access to the, the file system about ne network directly. We need more uh, restrictions on that because we run the, uh, the scripts from different people. We have security concerns. If you write something to the disk, disk other, other people should not be able to access that right we need to modify the code add some security layers but that's a not big problem here but the general idea is that uh, i can run your code here in a worker and this worker is thread it's not a process so it takes less uh resources and it is slim so it's fast so it's so fast that uh, i could say it's a uh, zero millisecond code start it's different from the lambda from other serverless platform and it is pretty here uh, easy to scale because we just uh, fork uh, another thread and run your code there this is why uh, the cloudflare says cloudflare workers take usage of v8 isolate because uh the worker actually the node.js worker also use isolate to create its worker okay so this is I see why it is called workers because it's similar to Node.js workers. I would say uh, this is a joke. <laughs> I believe that Cloudflare has much more uh, interesting reasons to name it workers. Anyway, the naming uh, indicates that they are similar to each other. 
and uh, so, and I hope you can get a better understanding、uh, about what Cloudflare Workers is. Notice that it's plural form; it's not worker; it's workers. Okay, so that's all for this video.、Uh, I'm pretty interested in this kind of infra infrastructure. And、uh, but there's still little concerns for large web applications to see wh whether it is really benefiting if we split all the logic into different functions, into different、uh, slightest functions. Yeah. Okay, but after I definitely would like to try it in the future.、Um, as a front end,、uh, for the most of the time, the infrastructure. It's not determined by us, right? So I would like to hear more opinions from the server side, from the infrastructure team.、Uh, anyway, so it's very interesting to know what it is. Hope it helps. See you next time. Bye bye.